Um, welcome to today's Plumbers of Data Science podcast. And um, today we are going to look at data infrastructure at Airbnb. Yesterday we looked at Netflix. If you uh, missed that, check in the, on the channel. And today we are going to look at um, Airbnb. Airbnb. Hi, Nick. Hi. Um, Airbnb, very interesting. Um, of course, as you can imagine, Airbnb, um, when you want to uh, uh, rent your, rent as a as a consumer, you want to rent your your uh, apartment or your uh, holiday. Um, how is that called in English? Not a hundred percent sure. So uh, you want to you want to rent something for the holidays, and you go to, onto Airbnb and get a get a apartment from someone who is offering that on Airbnb. Um, there is a lot of stuff uh, in the background. Uh, you have your, your app, but um, uh, there's a lot of data science and a lot of, of uh, data coming in in the background that is very interesting to look into. Um, how I um, started here is I was looking into, let me just share my desktop. There is a very interesting uh, blog on medium from airbnb i have seen that uh, that many companies use um, medium so they make a publication on medium and then share their engineering stuff on medium and i think this is to attract uh, engineers and to show um, what is happening and yeah so show that you're cool and and what you're doing and um, get interest into the company. Um, the Airbnb, Airbnb Engineering and Data Science um, publication, they have uh, AI, data, infrastructure, native web and people, and uh, some open source stuff. Um, we're going to focus on infrastructure today and on data. Um, because as you know, I'm not that... Uh, I'm into data engineering and not into the data scientist stuff and analytics and so on. So um, one interesting uh, article I have seen, this is a bit of an older one, and I think they have already made some major changes here. Um, an older one, infrastructure at Airbnb from February 2016. And an interesting thing here is um, uh, 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 what they say is, and this is one thing that, that I am also always making very clear when you're creating platforms, make sure it can scale and prefer standard components and methods and don't start building some special stuff that is that is working for you or only for you and yeah then then you're going to run into problems so uh, making sure it can scale this is super important um yeah leave some headroom <laughs> this is also a very interesting platform wise some tips um yeah of course, uh, the 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 optimal thing would be always have a, a minimalistic um, or, or minimal of more um, resources that you own that you that you uh, rent, like from Amazon, uh, than you actually need. The thing is with scaling, uh, in theory, that all works super easy and super great and so on, but. Um, yeah, that's not 100% the case and that's not always true. <laughs> so um, the idea is leave some headroom, leave a bit more headroom and um, so you you, uh, you don't run into problems and um, can use new, new, business, new business model or you can create new services without uh, getting bogged down by um, missing, um, missing resources on your cluster. Um, yeah, so here I found this uh, this very interesting. Um, like uh, like yesterday with Netflix, they are more more or less doing the same thing here. So they have event logs, 
and those are more or less logs that are coming from the applications that are coming from the users and so on and they are uh, they are getting into the system is this big enough uh, i can zoom a bit more here maybe mm. um, these events go through a kafka cluster kafka instance and then into uh, a, in this case, a Hadoop system. And I found this uh, this setup very interesting um, because usually when you think of Hadoop is you're getting a, a huge, a, a big cluster, you're uh, you're having a lot of, your, uh, or you're setting up your, your system, you have the name nodes and the data nodes and uh, all the, the, the stuff that is running on top of, of Hadoop and you use a cluster to store data and to analyze the data. What they are doing here is a, something a bit different. And they um, they built this in a way that, that you have two different clusters, uh, gold and silver. And the idea with that is, if you if you look at, uh, at, at, at in the middle, it says only replication. Um, th that is not 100% the only value that you're getting with this setup that you create more or less two um, two of the same big data clusters. Um, what they are doing is the idea is this cluster on the on the gold cluster. There you have all the processing, all the super necessary, all the all the uh, processing for the live system, all the all the uh, analytics jobs that are running in your production environment and that have a a very a need for a very very high latency a, a low latency a, a very very um, uh, need for a need for a very high service level agreement that you uh, that where you can make sure that the the that the um, processes and the analytics and the storage and everything is running in a in a very very reliable manner and the problem when you're when you're doing this is you are you're using your data on top of that um, gold cluster if you only have let's say you only have this one so you you don't have a silver cluster um, you you're creating new analytics jobs you're you're working on the live data in the gold cluster and with Hadoop and with with more or less most of the big data systems, um, if you're if you're uh, working on the live cluster and you're doing uh, let's say um, you're doing something that is not optimized or that is that is eating a lot of resources, you um, you can get in trouble because you can st uh, stall your your live system. You can stall your cluster. For instance, with Hive. Um, if you're on the gold, if you would uh, do analytics on the gold cluster, um, then you can. Um, if you're, if let's say, yeah, you you could do uh, like uh, full table scans, and full table scans. If you're if you don't uh, or if you're doing something wrong, and full table scans and go over a lot of data that you don't really need to go over, and you can really, uh, yeah maximize the 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 cluster um, usage and you can stall your your main system and this is this is not very optimal it's not very good um, and so what they are doing is they are replicating everything in their um, in their gold cluster onto a second cluster that is um, more or less the same and they are working uh, on top of this thing with all the uh, development and all the analytics and stuff. And so in this way, you can, you have, and, and the analytics, analytics only flows from uh, left to right, from gold to silver, uh, the, the data only flows from, from gold to silver. And so you are basically, um, you're safe that um, you always know the, the the gold is the lead and the silver is the uh, is the follower, and uh, you don't mess up the data. 
And so with this setup, like if you see here, you have a Spark cluster um, as well. You can analyze data, analyze more or less the live data here on the silver cluster um, without influencing the the active life system without influencing your um, yeah your your delivery to the customers and this is a I, I find this a very interesting setup I think it's <laughs> or I guess this is going to cost a lot of money um, to run but Airbnb is a is a big company so I guess this is the the they can they can do this and i'm not sure how s3 is is uh, is working here in that but yeah airflow um drag fly asks so where is the airflow running from and does that mean it replaces uzi in the classic sense of workflow scheduling um I'm not 100%. Uh, from this, it's it's not 100% sure on which cluster or on which systems the airflow thing is running. Um, but yes, this is then usually replacing the UZI system because um, UZI is in theory um, very good. But if you're if you're having a cluster with Spark and with uh, with Hive and HBase and the, all that stuff, um, there are some compat compatibil compatibility um, issues on that. That with uh, certain versions, uh, Spark two jobs are not running, and with certain versions, uh, this is not working and that is not working, and so. Uh, um in this case airflow um i think this this is replacing uzi on those clusters uh i have to admit i need to look more into airflow i'm not that uh, 100% familiar with airflow i haven't used that uh, i know what it does uh, but i'm i'm not uh i haven't used it um dragonfly maybe you have uh, used airflow i don't know have you used airflow before um yeah, so this is a, a, a infrastructure from, um, yeah, one more thing. This is an infrastructure from, from 2016, and I think they have already, um, uh, they have already changed some stuff here. Yes, I have, you, you will love it. <laughs> okay, interesting. Um, because with, uh, with usual, with, um, uh, with distributions like from Cloudera or something, uh, Airflow isn't included. I think does the map R have Airflow? I don't know. Um, one thing that is that is happening here, and uh, in a in another article they said this is uh, that we're we're going to come to that later. The the one of the problems here is the replication from gold to silver, and uh, that has some latency, and th that latency is not um, that's not optimal. And because you want to have, if you're looking into like something like Spark streaming, you want to have a a very low latency um, from from getting the actual data and then uh, doing the analytics stuff. And yeah, yeah. So and then through Presto, and uh, you can connect then to Blue, and yeah, you can have access to the data stored in the system um yeah dragonfly maybe i i need to uh, i need to keep that in mind i need to look a bit more into airflow um yeah so this is one interesting article i, I would recommend that you read um they have some a, a bit of stuff from uh, hadoop cluster evolution and yeah, some some problems they uh, they had and they are working on. Um, yeah, very interesting stuff here. Uh, yeah, stats and so on. You can check this out. Um, then, where was I? Was that 
the other thing here. Yeah, then uh, another interesting... How do you think they do a replication process? Um, yeah, but <laughs> yeah, the thing is the, uh, here, um, it's not a hundred percent sure how your data is getting from Kafka into uh, HDFS or S3 and into the Hive tables. So um, one thing that that people are doing is they use Spark to uh, basically connect to Kafka and uh, write data into uh, into this one and uh, yeah I'm I'm not 100% sure how they do the replication then um I'm, maybe do they have some um, do they have some information about the replication here <laughs> because I don't think so. I haven't seen this right now. No. No, they don't have a real information on how they do the replication. Um, yeah. Can't say it, it it could be it could be spark jobs. What you what you can do is that you are um yeah. I'm not sure because they uh, they in this in this thing they don't have Spark connected to the gold cluster. They have Spark or a cluster connected to the hive uh, to the silver cluster. Hmm. Yeah, what, one one typical thing is you get Kafka um, connected to Spark and then right into HDFS and you have the hive tables that are connected to the HDFS uh, folders and yeah. Don't know, no, no. That's interesting. It's interesting. Um, yeah, one thing. Um, another article that is interesting: uh, scalability in web serving tier. Um, yesterday we've been we've been talking about how to get data in. How uh, how are they getting data in with microservices, or, or how might that have be happening? Um, and in in today's uh, thing that I have found uh, uh, at um, Airbnb, one interesting part is how they serve data to the actual um, clients, and they had some problems of uh, yeah, of errors and and uh, and re yeah, not reliability and performance, and um, an interesting thing is. What they are using is they they are using uh, SQL databases. So they have for for serving they have SQL databases, and they have web servers um, in front web servers that are uh, delivering the content to you as a as a user. And um, usually, what you do is you connect uh, the web server to your database and do some connection pooling. And a SQL database has the option to more or less um, uh, work or, or work in a in a um, parallelized way in a in a yeah in a in a, a way where you have multiple databases together and you can pool to them and uh, get data from them. Uh, I'm I'm a bit missing the. The special the the words for that um the idea here is what they have done is they are using from maria db maria db is a open source mysql um alternative and there is a a proxy service from maria db um, max scale and they have more or less they have proxy servers in between the actual web servers and the databases that are uh, they are delivering the content to you, and so what they are doing is they can uh, then route the data to uh, different instances of the SQL databases. Uh, I'm not sure what is here. Uh, Air Master and uh, Calendar and Message. What exactly is is in there? Um, but yeah, so they can they can route the data into the databases and they. Um, 
if if you're having then multiple uh, multiple instances it's very easy to scale the whole ab operation so this is this is an interesting thing and um yeah they have some statistics here um this is also something yeah you can look into um another thing and this is why i said in uh and this this is from 2016 and i think they have changed uh, some stuff around here and they haven't uh, said that um is that they are using a uh, druid uh, and druid is a uh, is a database um how do i have a wiki here um column oriented uh, distributed data store so it's a it's a more or less a, a, a like a sql database um and 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 yeah so the 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 setup of the of such a thing is a bit different so what you have uh um with through it as you can see they are they are using kafka and then spark and then uh, putting the data into druid and from there uh, they uh, what uh, with druid how druid works is you have historical notes and historical notes buffer the data and um, so you don't need to write all the data to hard disk you, you have very very quick access to the data and i'm 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 not 100% sure what they did. So they have still, they have some batch processing here in HDFS and S3. Um, this indicates something that they are, um, that they are doing. They are still having, uh, having the setup we have talked before, but I am, I'm, I'm, yeah. They have they have bolted on Druid or they have they have because Presto is here again, and we have seen Presto here, so um, it's not it's not one hundred percent clear what they have done, but uh, they they have uh, they they wanted to go the 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 uh, more performance oriented the the lower latency and. Uh, faster access route because if you're uh, if you're looking at, at uh, this the problem with hive and if and you want to have hive access is hive is not uh, super quick and yes um nick asks is apache druid an analog to a uh, cloudera kudu um kudu or impala i always um because i don't use in my environment, Kudu and in, in uh, Impala right now. Um, Impala. Yeah, I think it's. Mm, maybe to both. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. This is this is definitely some something analog to those um, those things. Um, yeah. The so uh, the idea with uh, with the with um, Nick R says Kudo is part of Cloudera CDH. It could handle both types of workloads. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, as well as Impala is also a part of, of Cloudera uh, distribution. So, um, yeah. Um, yeah, Druid is, is, is in, it's interesting. They have, they have changed something here and, um, yeah, they also have a dual cluster. A configuration for Druid. Um, the thing is, yeah, they say the clusters are relatively small. Yeah. 
I wasn't. Oh. As you can see, it's a wall of text here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's uh, focus. Let's keep here focusing here. Um, where was they? They had they had something about. I'm trying a lot of data. Yeah, more or less what I have said already that uh, with with uh, Hive, this is not uh, that super quick. Um, yeah. So uh, they might have gone into Druid. Druid, you you can. Where is it here? Um, how how much does that? Is that for free? Um, Druid, Druid, Druid. Where can I download this? Download. Mm, okay. Okay. It might be a community edition here. Let me just check. it strange I had a pricing thing before but I cannot find it anymore hmm <laughs> doesn't matter yeah so um yeah wow oh, now I've I've been running through the topics here again um yeah, something I, I, f I find this very interesting. Um, where was there was another thing I wanted to show you? Huh? Um, yeah, I, I'm Nick uh, says Druid is still incubating, does not seem a good idea to use it in production, uh, made it. Um, yeah yeah i i don't know the thing is you don't know the the amount of resources that um companies like airbnb can throw at it and how much uh, airbnb is involved into the druid um development itself so yeah maybe maybe this is is not as uh as in production as they say um, because this post is a newer one. This is from November to 2018. So this is... Um, have there some statistics here? Metrics. Mm. So they say Druid is a big data analytics engine designed for scalability, maintainability, and performance. It's well factored architecture allows easy management and scaling of Druid development, and its optimized storage format enables low latency analytics queries. I think that this is this is the the thing they were for or they were looking for low latency analytics queries. Uh, we have successfully deployed Druid at Airbnb for our use cases and see continued growth. In its footprint as our user base and use cases grow so um yeah i it looks like they have some they have some use cases um realized and yeah that's it's not it's maybe it, it hasn't it hasn't uh, replaced so much stuff yeah. and this is what i what i talked about um you want to join interested in joining the team uh, please check out our open position to send your application this is this is why they do that um, so people get interested in the whole thing and check it out um, I thought I had another top open kudu how we deliver insight to our host yeah um, 
and uh, uh, some something interesting they have here. This is also an older post, December 2016, how they deliver insights back to the host. So if, uh, you who, who offer your, your apartment for someone. Um, and what they said here, uh, okay, host enters the calendar page. The, so the, the, the databases that we have seen before, the calendar database is then is then the database behind that. And interestingly, you can see Redis here, um, a in-memory database. So it they have a lot of systems running. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting. Find insights, rank insights. Um, of what I wanted to show you, I want, what I found uh, interesting is what they collect. Um, I need to prepare these sessions better so I can find it quicker. Um, Whenever a host takes an action on insights, the backend system tracks those events through Redis. So, um, yeah, types of actions that the system tracks include impression, conversion, skip, and dismiss. Um, in order to keep insight fresh, it uses the interaction data to implement fatigue rules. Okay, fatigue rules and so on. Um, so, they they get you the the information for um for how um for your bookings and and so on so so insights to your to your offer and they also then track what you are doing on the site and which which uh, things you're uh, you're checking and if you uh, change the price and if you um yeah then act on top of of that um that information. So this is this is also interesting. Um, yeah, those are the they have the big, more or less the services and size so backend system. Yeah. Okay. I, I wanted to to show you the 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 Redis part here. Um, I find this interesting that they they have a lot of a lot of interesting systems in use. Um, yeah. This is so far what I have prepared for today. Um, yeah, something, have you seen something that is, Nick, Dragonfly, guys, have you seen something that is that is interesting here that, that you wanted to, uh, or, or that you think is, is more, or it would be good to look into further in this context here? Otherwise, I'm, I'm just clicking here a bit more. Um, and looking into what they are. What they're writing about. Airbnb. Huh, interesting. Interesting. Logging event. So, hmm. November 2018, another, the, the, here's another pipeline they are doing. Um, client services, um, so this is, this then are the, um, this is a pi this is also a pipeline for uh, clients that connect to the, to the, for instance, like the UI and the services like uh, apps. And they are sending data to Kafka, Spark Streaming, HBase and then into Hive. So if you if you remember this thing here, um, they have HDFS here. This can also be that uh, you have as a middle layer the HBase key value store. Um, oops, where is it? Where has it gone? E here. Because HBase uh, in the background uh, is using HDFS to um, to store the data. So this is another pipeline that they are using. Airstream. 
as bulk streaming job built on top of Airstream, Airbnb streaming processing framework. Uh -huh. Yeah, so they're they're pumping it into each each base and then into a hive table hourly. Yeah, this is pretty typical. Numbers of events per week. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what does that mean here? Without a a numer numeration on the axis. Uh, what they are saying is the the events are are growing and growing and growing. Spark parallelism is determined by the number of Kafka partitions. This is this is very true. Um, this is very true. You need a a good amount of uh, of Kafka partitions. Um, or a good relation between Kafka partitions and executors on the in, in the Spark environment to use the full full power of Spark. Kafka topic A partition yeah splits. Okay, this is how it's stuff is splits. Split is balancing. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, what do you think? Was that interesting? Airbnb. Um, something missing. Uh, what would you like to see tomorrow? Because we're going to do this tomorrow. Uh, don't forget. By the way, don't forget to hit the like button on this one. Um, we can go over, or we could go over, let's see here. Let me check the cookbook. We could uh, look into something like... Hmm, something a bit different. Something like if a like a LinkedIn or PayPal, PayPal thing is also interesting, um, or Spotify. Um, I don't know. Let me know in the comments uh, what you would like to see. This is from my cookbook that I have on my Patreon that you can find in the in the description of the. Um, of the this video um i'm doing the cookbook um more or less uh, for for newcomers for start for people who are starting with data engineering and for people who want to uh, advance in data engineering and yeah so i am having some some uh, s s more or less the the basics and then with the new cookbook i'm doing i'm, I'm having a collection of the um, the case studies and with all the links from the case studies um, about healthcare industry healthcare do I have health didn't, don't I have healthcare in here mm. okay um, that's a good idea that's a good idea I need to remember that new document Um, healthcare. Yeah, Nick, with Tesla, I have been looking into Tesla, but they are not very open to what they are actually doing and what type of, of systems they are using and their, their setup. Um, it's very clever. <laughs> and yeah. yeah. So, so Tesla would be interesting but uh, we cannot we cannot get stuff from tesla um maybe i find something 
um, but I, I I already searched uh, on uh, Google and I I didn't come across stuff from um, from Tesla, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, Tesla isn't is revealing. Elon Musk knows what he's doing, so he's not he's not revealing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah, yeah. I I think I my guess is he doesn't need the publicity. Yeah, yeah. We can do booking dot com. This is is interesting. Yeah. It's it's a bit connected to Airbnb, but yeah, yeah. So let's let's do booking dot com tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah, that's what what most and and this is um, Nick says Booking dot com. Then I know that they collect a huge amount uh, a huge amount of uh, clickstream data to make their services better, and that's that is that is the way to go. And this is what people don't understand: all that clickstream data. This that is super important. You need to know at all times what are the users doing, where are they clicking, what services are they using, and so on. And so clickstream is is super important. And let me just check a interesting. I have a book. Where was that? Wasn't that in Lean Startup? Wasn't that in lead startup? Let me just check. Hmm. Yeah. So I'm talking about lean startup from Eric Ries. Interesting book. Um, but yeah, I always take take stuff with a grain of salt and don't get too crazy with it 114 so um he he um now oh, it's getting a, <laughs> it's getting a book review um he he split it in part one vision part two steer part three accelerate and in part two steer at uh, chapter seven um uh, measure it's 114 wasn't there a <laughs> no. Um hmm. um there was a lot about um measuring and testing measure everything and optimize um Mm, why something seemingly dull as accounting with change mm. yeah so yeah the w one thing that i i would uh say from from this part here uh, regarding clickstream is it's super important to to measure the stuff because you uh, when you create the application you make some assumptions on how um, people are using your services, are using your platform or whatever. And you need to test those assumptions and you, you need to test those assumptions, which which features are are really used and which feature features are, uh, you can phase out and, and don't concentrate on them. And yeah, so, Lean, Lean Startup from Eric Gries. Interesting book. Um, I buy these books in bulk from uh, second hand. So then I've, I've, this is a, is a great tip. Uh, people always tell me, wow, these, these books are, are super expensive and so on. This, this book uh, costs a new uh, 26 US dollars. I get this from uh, in, in Germany from medium ops three euros or something yeah um, a 
have heard they do not uh, so open to yeah. <laughs> um, best practice yes we need uh, to know more information about clickstream um, best practices yeah yeah best practices about clickstream I can I th maybe maybe one of those uh, case studies here or cases here has a good um, information about clickstream I'm going to look into this and maybe select this then um, for one of the next ones um, and the ways of using it yeah of course yeah um, I've been collecting clickstream through NiFi and pulling to HBase and HDFS yeah um, I I need to do a, a stream about NiFi NiFi is, is super interesting I haven't uh, had uh, the opportunity to work in a live environment with with NiFi but what I found super I have heard it uh, uh, how long was that a few months ago uh, was the first time I heard about NiFi um, and I find it very interesting now if I can quickly find that in the documentation if I docs and uh, let me just get this to another window so you can see what I'm doing um, I found the uh, I find the what's the, the options that NiFi has to um, work with data very very interesting so um, data transformation routing database uh, what's that um, it has to be here data ingestion yeah um, the the amounts of of options you have uh, with NiFi to to uh, ingest data and to uh, then put out uh, push out data is super interesting um, from FTP servers from SFTP servers HTTP requests UDP uh, HDFS also something super interesting um, list fetch get um, from S3 from Kafka MongoDB <laughs> Twitter okay um, this is super interesting um, I have some cases where I could have used this a few years back where I had to write um, Java code or Java Java translation software myself and now I could just use NiFi to um, yeah to get this is yeah, and then you can send data out uh, put email fi <laughs> emails uh, files FTP SFTP Kafka MongoDB yeah it's post a make HTTP uh, post AWS so it's NiFi is a NiFi is a very interesting interesting tool and yeah Um, Nick says um, clickstream sounds reasonable but much more interesting is what to exactly do with that data after gathering uh, yeah yeah the thing is this is uh, right now not where what I'm focusing on with those streams here because um, then what exactly are you doing with it and how are you analyzing the data this is then again more a data scientist topic not a engineering topic in in that case if you know what I mean so I I would like to right now I would like to focus on um, on the on the 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 engineering part we can um, we can flow in some some information about what people are doing with it but not in a way that um, with technical information and go deep into um, into the the algorithms that they're using and so on so 
Um, yeah. Yeah, most data transformations are directly available in iFi. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the w w one thing that is um, that you need to look into if you're using so, uh, tools like this is um, you cannot like with with NiFi if you have and you can. Uh, open a port and make a more or less an API and get the data into that API or for, for, for uh, with with HTTPS calls or something. And while this is uh, sounds very, very easy and very, very uh, uh, quick to set up, the thing is always with those cases that it's a security problem, I would say. Um, in in uh, production environments, uh, it's it's not that simple to just set up a a, a, a API or a, a server open a port and um, push the data in so mm, and it's also not uh, not for let's say for front facing systems or internet facing systems I would say this is it's not the best it's not the best uh, tool I think I've forgotten here and uh, yeah, something Nick says and stream sets also is super convenient. Web ETL tools also highly recommend. Um, now we are now it's getting out of hand. <laughs> um, stream sets, stream sets, stream sets. I haven't heard about this. As this is what uh, what I'm telling you guys. It's if you're if you're talking about tools, it's getting it's getting out of hand so so quickly because there are so many tools. It's it's crazy. Um, another question from Nick: um, Is Spark more flexible in ETL terms than NiFi? Seems it's other visual tools. Um, more flexible. More flexible. I would say mm, that depends. I mean, if you look at at all the input uh, uh, or in in chest options here, uh, now you cannot see my screen. Just a second. Um, if you ca uh, if you look at the input uh, ingestion options here, um, of course with Spark you cannot ingest some HTTPS data directly into into Spark, and uh, some and to do UDP connections and and so on. You can use S3. Yes, um, I would say from the flexibility point, um, NiFi is super flexible and. It's also interesting that you, how you can, uh, how you pro, how you, uh, how you set it up. That you set it up with a visual in a visual environment, and this is a this is a, a very very interesting tool. Um, yeah, I need to look into. Um, yeah, I have seen people on LinkedIn talk about. NiFi and NiFi setups or setup uh, platform setups with NiFi. Maybe I can find this quickly. Just a second. Um, my guess is I can't find it, but I have liked it. I did like it. Yeah. Mm. Uh, hmm. the the problem with LinkedIn the the search function is terrible. This is a freaking joke. Hmm. Hmm. No. 
Uh, I can't find it. Um, yeah, maybe if I find it, I, I repost it again. Um, yeah, tools are, uh, there are endless tools. Um, yeah, the, 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 the thing is, and this is why I, why I Dragonfly, and this is what um, um, Dragonfly says. Yes, you're right about the tools. There is a lot of them out there. Adopting it uh, to business problem is the key. Exactly. And this is what I said to you yesterday. Um, this is why I'm, 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 I switched from explaining tools and getting into tools into these case studies because it's... Um, it's super interesting and super important to get a feeling what is out there, what are people really using. Because um, while NiFi might seem a super interesting option and a very, very flexible thing, and um, if the market isn't, isn't using it, if nobody is using it out there, um, as a beginner or, or yeah, intermediate maybe, but as... Yeah. The, the 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 actual use for you to learn it um before you let's say um you learn it and you don't have a a, a option to apply it at work or um yeah it, it, then it, it almost doesn't make sense to learn it if you can't have a if you don't have a, an application for it and it's very very hard or or very very yeah if let's say NIFI isn't that used, it's very interesting. Um, you learn it, you don't have an application for it right now. You are going on the job market and you search for jobs that are uh, that are using NIFI. Uh, then it's hard that you uh, that you find them, or that you don't find really jobs. And then yeah, it's the the how do you say this? The the return the return on invest for you to learn it is is quite low so yeah yeah that's that's one thing that yeah I have to keep in mind always um but i guess nifi is 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 coming it's yeah the one thing one thing I like is that you you basically um because with a lot of stuff you have JSON um objects that you are that you're processing. And that might be with Clickstream, that might be with uh, some other information. And with NiFi, it's very simple to to click this together and and do some conversions, and post this into something like a database. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's interesting. Okay, so tomorrow Booking dot com. I just want to check. Um, one, two. I already have three. Uh, okay, you don't see it. <laughs> I need to work on getting better here um i already have three links that i want to look into um i might be finding more for tomorrow two slide shares um yeah okay um if there isn't uh, more um i'm starting this session every day at 10:30 uh, uh, central uh, Central Europe time CET is CET is it called Central Europe time CET yeah Central European time um, or 2.30 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time yeah so every, every day um, 10.30 p.m. Uh, CET or 2.30 PST, because um, this is more or less the only time slot I have to do stuff like this. Um, I have tried morning streams. I can I could get up at 5 a.m., but 
<sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's then you're a zombie. <laughs> Are you based in Berlin? God no. <laughs> God no. Uh no, I don't want to live in Berlin. <laughs> um Um yeah, I'm I'm living in the countryside. Um near near Würzburg. That's between Nuremberg and uh, Frankfurt. And uh yeah. In a a nice town and yeah. 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 Because my uh, I'm I'm working currently working for Bosch Rexroth and Bosch Rexroth is in is in Laura Mine. This is an even smaller town than than Würzburg, but it's a it's a huge company, um, um, part of the Bosch, uh, part of Bosch, and yeah, yeah, Bayern, Franken, <laughs> Franconia. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I would, I would, I don't, I would never want to uh, live in in Berlin. I, I lived in Nuremberg for some time during studies, but uh, no, no, Nuremberg is a nice is a nice city, but I'm not, uh, I'm not someone who wants to live in the city. Um, yeah, guys, I'm I'm ending it here. Yeah, thanks for being here, Nick. Great questions, um, great questions from all of you guys. Uh, yeah, the the <laughs> don't call it class. This is not a class. <laughs> this is a. I, I I would like to have this as a. Yeah, I said it yesterday as a as a opportunity for for us us together to work through some topics and for you to to connect together and, and and talk yeah okay so tomorrow booking.com um see you there and bye bye and now i am going to the end screen so i don't have to cut this in uh, later on and all right. Bye-bye, guys. And I'm stopping the stream. <laughs>